basic set string. Hi there, it's Alicia Stringer here with 2A6SStringBlog.com and today we're going to go take your business to the next level through an internet lead generation boot camp with me, Alicia Stringer, and here we are on day three. A little bit about myself. I've been using MLSP since it started in 2008 and really seen a lot of changes throughout the years of what marketing has done. I've also seen a lot of changes in myself in my marketing and can really tap into several things that I've learned along the way. And so if you have any questions about a specific strategy or maybe how you, you're going approaching different things, just simply ask me on my fan page or contact me and I'll be glad to um, see if you can help you go in some, the right direction getting some testing tools and especially if, if you've been watching some of the training um, since I've seen about all of them you, um, there's a lot of different strategies that are brought to the table in the system so that's definitely good and bad you don't need to do all the strategies <laughs> and <laughs> good that you can focus on one so who is this boot camp for? It's for those building a business, learning how a business funnel works, learn the basic traffic generation skills on how to bring people to their business, learn how to dominate the search engines and continue to rank where people can find you, and who wants to automate their business on autopilot so they're not working in their business, they're working on it, and being able to direct it in the right direction they, they see it long term. So what are some of the goals each day? Day one, we went through what type of business is best to build online. Day two, how a profitable business funnel is set up. Day three, here we are going through efficiency and social media and organizing setup. And day four, we'll go through keyword research. And day five, some of the traffic strategies so you can dominate. So on day three, we're going to go through our efficiency and setting up all our social media up online and getting some organization in your computer so you can put this all into place in a systemized manner. So we're going to go through and I'm going to recommend a browser you need to use, which is Google Chrome. So we'll look through some of the extensions. And um, you can use some of these in Firefox as well, because I understand um, some tools and stuff I use you can only do on Firefox as well. But um, So they'll have plugins, they call it and you can find probably the similar ones on there as well. And I'm going to recommend you use Gmail for email service. I understand some of the other ones like Yahoo will have some of the same functions and so I'm going to go through how you organize your email box. Since you're going to be getting about one or two a day from me, you need to understand how to organize that. And we're also going to go through and set up your Google Voice number, a phone number set up for your business. Set up a calendar on Tungle Me so you can stay organized in your, in your day planning. Day and go through Hootsuite, how to organize all your social media websites. And Skype as a tool to connect with people and show you some different tools on how you can use that efficiently. So here we are on our browser going through Google Chrome. Here are the extensions you need to write down that we'll plug in together and I will share with you what each of them do in Google Chrome here. So take a moment and write these down. Um, here's some seven to kind of start with. There's several extensions you, you can use um, and this is just kind of a start. I'll explain what these are. There's a Cooper page rank checker. Number two, an SEO quake. Three, ultimate Chrome flag. Four, Google Global. Five, an RSS subscription extension. Number six, LastPass, and seven, Y stamp. Okay, so write those down. In a moment, I'll show you how to use them in Google Chrome. So here we are in Google, and we've typed in extensions in the search bar. And here is the first site you come to to find all our extensions. So click on that and we need to search for extensions and our first one is a page rank checker. Let's see if I have that. So I just type in 
page weight checker. And you'll see some of the top ones that come up. And I see I like the SEO status. Um, you can try any of these. Um, but what this one is going to do, and you just add it to your crown, is this going to check the page rank and Alexa toolbar. And you see you have this um, installed. It's going to have a little thing up here. And it's going to show the page rank, some of the backlinks, who is it, some of the availability. When it has a low number, I mean, just got it's getting a lot of traffic, and it's um, being ranked pretty high. So this one's zero right now. The site we're on. Um, we'll just take a wild guess and go to my blog, I guess, so we can see the extension working. So the SEO status is only three. It's not in the top 100,000 yet. So, but my Alexa ranking is 314,801. So that's a pretty good ranking. It's a pretty low number. Um, but we want to get in the top 100,000, so it would have to be under that number. It would have to be a low number there. So I hope that makes sense, and you can kind of see some of the top traffic strategies on that. Let's go to YouTube and see what it's ranked. I'm not sure if my channel is going to show up since so it's a page rank 5, number 3. Well, let's go to the main site so you can kind of compare. Now this one's a 3, page rank 9. So the page rank I think is pretty tight, pretty high, and it's harder to rank for um, one of these um, sites. Okay, so let's go back and search the store again for our next extension. We have SEO Quake. This one might be pretty similar to the one we just did. So let's check it out. There's several ones. And you can click on the description and see how many users each of them have. This is the one um, that's recommended. SEO Quake, and this is going to show you a lot of these SEO factors as well on how you can get your website to rank. And this will really matter when you start getting a blog and start getting um, in the natural listings of Google here. So we want to add it, install it, and I'll say some of the features that will come to it. Okay? So now it's installed, and you can see all the highlights and preferences it's going to have with it. Okay, so let's go to the next one. The ultimate crown flag. Now this one will show you which country website's coming from. I think it's pretty neat. Okay, so here it is. Click on that one. And then you can add it to Chrome and install it. So you can see what it's going to look like. It's going to come from the different places. You're going to find here in the little browser bar which country that this website is coming from. And the IP address um, hovers over it there. You can see some of those special facts. So that's, I think it's kind of neat when you're looking for different companies or something and you're researching some different MLM companies or um, whichever site you're coming from to see where it's located from, where the site is originated from. So you'll have a little flag there. Very fun. <laughs> okay, let's go Google, Google Global. I think this one's pretty similar. Let's go check it out. Okay, so this one has been updated for a while. Search Google on different countries. There's lots of great app extensions here. I like the uTorrent. Okay, so we're going to get this one. <laughs> okay, so search Google in different countries. 
and this is really neat when you're doing possibly some paper click or you're learning from how other countries are seeing your website so you'll see this Google Chrome has got a, a box right up here and you're going to pretend that you are in the UK now and you're going to do a website search and how would they um, see your website from another location they're going to be getting different search terms, different searches that show up in their things according to their um, country of where they're located. They're, they're going to find search terms and stuff located close to where they are. Okay, so you can kind of see that if you want to be searching in different locations and see all the new tools that they have in different countries. Pretty neat too. Okay, so let's go to the next one. RSS subscription extension. Okay. What this one's going to do is make it easier for you to subscribe to different websites. Okay, this one right here. One click subscription to your toolbar. You can add it and install it. And it's going to show up right here. And so whenever you see a really neat site that you want to come to and come back to, or you want to get their feed, maybe you want to update something, um, one of your competitions on there, and you want to make sure you're plugging into what they are doing all the time, you want to RSS feed it right there. And you possibly want to do all your sites, make sure they're on the, your reader as well, and so you can access it easily. Okay? You don't know what those RSS feeds are? Okay, let's find another one. LastPass. I think this one's my favorite one. <laughs> if you haven't used LastPass, you will probably save me. There are tons of websites out there today that you need um, to have your username and password and <laughs> there's tons of sites Facebook all our social media sites you don't need to be going back and forth to your written down notes or wherever you've saved your passwords in a safekeeping place <laughs> you do need to have it written down I will recommend you do that in case something happens on your computer or you know you need to have your password somewhere else off your computer. Save them on your computer and then take them off. <laughs> or change them regularly. You're going to get a little dashboard of all the websites that you have and they can create passwords for you and it fills it in for you if you want it to or not um, but it will store all your passwords and I think it's pretty safe. Um, I haven't seen anything bad about using it with several sites I have many different passwords for, such as Google and YouTube. I have several different Gmail accounts and um, YouTube channels. And so it lists it all for you right in a row. Um, so it can, you can go to the correct account. Right here, you know, there's several accounts I have. So it will find your account and you can log into it. Um, so it's pretty easy and very fast and efficient and when you're going from password site to password site. So it's highly recommended. You get something like this. Some people, there's some other things that are similar. So you need efficiency in your time and this will save you efficiency of having to type it down each time. Okay? That's what we need in our business. We need to get business and get it done. Okay, here's Y stamp. If you don't know what Y stamp is, it makes your signatures and your email accounts professionally done. Okay, so here it is. I think I might have already installed it. That's how you search for it. Yeah, I've already added it. So this will allow in your Gmail account to have a professional um, signature. You can put a picture, put all your social media sites, your website you want to put in there, and it will automatically 
put that in there in your email account every time you compose a message or respond to a message, reply to a message, I mean. So it's going to have it automatically in there. And you can do different signatures in different ways. Um, you can also have several different signatures that you want to go back and forth. Maybe you want to test some or you have a couple different businesses that will pertain to different people. And which is I, what I do. I have, you know, a personal and business one or, you know, you can name it different things and edit the different signatures. And this is good. It has a little template where you can use it and copy it into your autoresponder as well for whenever you create messages. So a lot of different ways um, to use Y stamp here in your signatures. It makes it branded to you and your business where people are referencing. You don't need to you don't have to type in all your co company information every time you type an email. That's you know wasting time right there. You need to have that signature ready. Okay, I think we have gone through the different tools now. Excellent. So let's go through on how to organize your Gmail account here. We're going to learn how to filter folders. Um, maybe you need a personal one or etc. We're going to find out some different ways you can organize your Gmail into folders. You can use a plus symbol to filter emails as well. When you go through and get on some people's different list, or you're going to opt in to different list um, to get some information, you can use that plus um, to categorize your emails. So let's say you want a guru um, status emails, and you want to establish them all in gurus, or you know, or something. Um, I've done it to different people on. Um, so you can recognize where the email is coming from. It's your own customization. And, of course, we're going to customize our signature with Y stamp. Okay, so I'll show you a little bit on how you filter folders. But these kind of you're going to have to play around with and put your Y stamp together. Like I said, we were back in Y stamp. And it's going to have a little tool right here. And you just click on it. And you can open it up and customize it on however you want by putting your your picture in there and, and there's several different templates you can use and it's pretty easy to set up and add different icons and so forth. Okay, and then when you want to see the HTML, copy it into something else, you know, you can do that. Okay? So let's go into um, Gmail account. Okay, so this one's are kind of regularly used. And to compose, you need to go into your settings. And you make some different folders. Oh, no, it's not where. Let me go back. I usually used to do that. Hold on, let me find it. Okay, I'm going to show you my personal email account so you can see really what you do. You see here I have this little label, List Joe. If I'm getting lots of List Joe messages, you need to label this. And see how they're already marked red when they come in. And so what you can do is click on it and um, move it to the different labels, List Joe, and it's already gone in there. Okay, I need to create a new one with TriPro. I haven't done this yet. Try Pro, create new. And it doesn't need to be under any other label. You can create it, and it's gone into there. And so now I can check there. Apply. No conversation. So you can select one and move it to Try Pro. So now it has a label. And you can even search for all of them. Try Pro. Okay, so now there's a way to click them all. And label them. Try Pro. Try Pro. 
and apply. And different labels what you can do. Uh, if you don't want to read them, you can mark them as red. They don't really tell me anything. They just tell me who's gone into TriPro. Exciting stuff. Building your tribe. Okay. So now they are all labeled with TriPro. Oh, it didn't be. Um, take it off. Okay. There we go. Alright, so it's labeled. You've got your labels in there. Organize your email in a way that's efficiently efficient so you can see what's going on in your email box. You can see those labels a lot easier now. You don't have to read them so that the important ones are already standing out. And you see Google has put an important message because maybe I've seen that a lot. You know, I like Avon. <laughs> so you can see that those labels are marked important. And you can see um, mark some messages important. And you can also see all the important messages in one spot as well. Okay? So they're all going to come in first, and you can kind of see them all lined up. Okay? And what I like to do, and it's something I want to come back to, I put stars on it um, that I know I need to come back to and do some actions, or um, I know I need to go back and, and do something. I've seen it. I need to do something again. I star it. People use the stars in different ways. They kind of stand out to me where those are my important messages I need to keep, and um, they're all in one place. Okay, so use these tools efficiently so you're in your email box and you can find things right away. The search box I use all the time. I've kept this email box for several years and I haven't deleted anything. So all my information is here. All I do is click it all and mark it as red as I see it um, as, I, as it goes through. So I, as you can see, I have the 271 email messages I need to go through and clean up and kind of look through, but I only do this like once a week, okay? And and so that's kept up for, I don't know, three or four days now that I haven't gone through and just cleaned out all the emails that I've looked through. So the star is there for a reason. I'm going to come back to it. The email box has some emails in it that's captured up, and I'm going to go through and clean them up in one time. You don't need to be sitting here cleaning out and reading your emails as they come in all day long. Okay, use your email efficiently where you check them, see the important stuff, and get out. Clean up the ones you want to go back and reference, either by starring it or just kind of unmark them as not read and know you're going to read them another time. Okay, another way to go and see all the ones in the labels, maybe you want to look at all the ones that are labeled TriPro or, you know, whatever you labeled it, and read them all at one time. So maybe you want to search for all the emails that I give you and kind of go through systematically what everything's kind of put together. Put all those email, put search my name or something um, that I use in each email and mark that and go through each email one at a time. That way they're organized. Okay, and spend the time efficiently and get out and do that in the most systematic fashion. Okay? So that's a little bit about Gmail. Don't spend all day reading your emails. Use it as efficiently um, and reference and get out and do your business. To set up Google Voice for your business. Google Voice is important to screen callers. Once you have it set up, you can have people say their name before that you talk to them. Or you cannot have that function enabled. And so you can screen out if you're getting a lot of spam people who are giving you voice broadcast, and so you don't have to answer those phone numbers. Um, set up a customized number. This is one that will go to any phone that you want to put together. Um, it can be your home phone. It could be anything. And if you happen to change your cell phone number, you can be able to change it and keep that same Google Voice number. You can organize it in your email box as well. All the messages that are left on this Google Voice number will be left printed up. Um, it will type it out for you what they said. So in case you don't have a chance to listen to it right there, it will go into your email box 
and you will see what they said in the email and the voicemail so you can respond more efficiently either by replying email back if you can't, don't have time to call them or um, get their information that you need. Okay. Another amazing feature I really like I'm using is it records your calls. Okay, so the function on how you record calls in Google Voice is go obviously into your Gmail account and call them from that phone number from the email account you created or have the person call into your Google Voice number and you press the number 4 and it will have a little recording this call is now being recorded and it will start to record your voice mount your voice is on the phone and it will put it in your email box as a voice recording you can download it in a um, mp3 you can email them the recording you can use it in many different functions it'll have it all in your email box ready for you so let's go to Google Voice and kind of show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we are in Google Voice. And to get to here, you have to go google.com forward slash voice. And to get an account is sometimes a little tricky. You may have to be invited to get a Google Voice account. Um, and it will have instructions on how you do that. Let me see if I can show you the page. No, because it's going to go to my account. Um, okay, so to get an account, um, you will just have to go to that, that site in your Gmail account. It's not going to show me since I have one in this account. On how to get started and get a Google Voice uh, number. And when you get a Google Voice number, your number will show up here and um, this is just my inbox I guess so you can call and put your number in call to different locations and you're going to call um, to a phone different directions and and connect okay so it has lots of lots of choices here which is really neat and to set it up, some of the settings. Um, it's been a while since I did this and I changed some of it. Um, account settings, I think, will show you um, to change your functions in your, in your voice. Okay. I didn't invite the same voice. So now I have to play around with it. It took me a little bit to figure some of that out and you can report some of the messages as spam which is really neat um, you can see the ones that are recorded and here it's showing you the recording um, showing you how you can email it download it or even embed it into your website so that can be very helpful when you want to record conversations um, and so forth and you can see some of the text um, that will come through in your um, Google Voice as well as it comes on as um, in your Google Voice number. Okay, so those are some of the basic functions of Google Voice and um, recommended using this as a business number to connect to your phone, whichever one you want, cell phone, wherever you're going to be using more and more efficiently. Okay? So let's go to tungle.me and this is going to in sync go together with your Google Calendar which I highly recommend you use to put all your events together and it allows you some to schedule other time with people um, by phone and Google will allow you to do that as well if you're in contact with them and they have a Gmail account. But if they don't, sometimes it's better just to do it in tungle.me where it's more of a public location. And it allows you to put your all your tasks on your calendar so you can 
get completed. It's going to remind you in your email box or however you want to be reminded. A text reminder. It'll get it'll light up for you. Okay, so let's go to tangle.me, and I may need to log out to show you my account here because I have it set up with a different account. Okay, so here it is. Here's my picture. Here's my personal account, Alicia Stringer. And you can see on here that when people make an appointment with you, you want to make some um, appointments with people. You can um, block out some time, pick a couple of different meeting times that work with your schedule, and continue and schedule it out, and they're going to be emailed and notified. Okay, and you can get all the information that you need about putting your info and, and times together um, with that. Makes it efficiently and connected with one another if you can't connect by phone to schedule a meeting to do this online like that. I notice a lot of um, people that have schedules lined up like hairdressers or um, lots of public people that have to make meetings all the time back to back we'll use that so they can have efficiency in their own people can change their meetings themselves and schedule it differently and how it's set up to your gmail account will be um, let me see if I can go through it Okay, so here is my Google Calendar, and um, I need to put more stuff in here, yes. But you can schedule out events, and I recommend you put in the MLSP wake-up call. Um, here's the information, 712-432-6268. The code is 100669-POUND. And so if you have this notification and um, are able to put this in, it will give you some updates, maybe 10 minutes before, however you want to set it up, and it will kind of warn you. So you need to make this phone call. And, you know, something that's regular like that every day, um, you can schedule that out. Or if there's different appointments you need to put in, it's easy just to put them in here and plug them in. And it will connect. As soon as you do that, it will connect publicly on when you're available or not available. Okay? See, it says right here, I'm not available between that time for the MLSP call. Okay? So, it's automatically going to update right away on your public profile. And you'll have to sign in and set that up in your Tungle.me calendar to get that going for you. Okay? More efficiency and setting up with your team and getting things going on Tungle.me. Oh, going too fast here. Hold on. Okay, so let's go and organize Hootsuite. <laughs> yes, it's an owl that hoots. <laughs> Hoot, hoot, sweet. Organizing social media. And here we're going to set up Twitter, ping.fm, Facebook profile, and pages. Um, MySpace is not so hot anymore. LinkedIn and set up. Um, schedule post and track everything that you're doing. Okay, so this is about the main social media you can set up. And it's not going to have all of them, but ping.fm will have all the rest of the social media sites out there that you want to update. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to ping.fm so you can see how many there are. And I recommend this doing this once and it will be done for you. Okay, so here's ping.fm. Uh, it updates all your social media in one place. Okay, so you plug in, put in your passwords and um, usernames and passwords in all of these sites. Here's a list of them. 
and I have done most of them. Most of these are particular to different countries. Maybe this one's Canada um, and so forth. So be mindful of that when you're using those. Some of these like WordPress.com that, you know, obviously it's a blog site and so it may not update the same way as it would in Facebook, right? So they're going to have different posts or, and everything. Okay, so here's all the, the social networks you can get set up in, in ping.fm. Now let's go to Hootsuite and see how you put it all together. Okay, so here's our Hootsuite. It is free to use except for when you want to possibly use a team to use your social media, different websites y'all are all using together. You want to outsource some um, things to do in there, say for they, they need to put some updates and keep that scheduled out. Um, another reason why you have to pay for it is you have uh, more than one account on um, maybe you're, you're doing it for several different accounts. Okay, so we'll log in so you can see um, how exactly you put it together. It's pretty easy to set up. You just come over here. I got something new. I've used this for a while. In your settings and set up your social networks. Okay, you can have all your all of your Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts, all your Facebook pages, LinkedIn, and here's your ping.fm. Okay? And my space got bumped to the bottom. Other accounts you can have in there. Um, I'm not sure. I think that pretty much covers all of them. Um, add a social network. Let's find them. Okay. WordPress. Maybe if you want to update your blog. Foursquare and Mixie is what they've added to. And I haven't added those. This is getting more popular. Yay! <laughs> okay. And you can add these to your Twitter profiles right here on how it automatically updates your Twitter when you put messages in here. Oh. Sorry, I didn't want to do that. I already did that. Okay, and you can add team members here. And so forth. Okay? Um, as well, there's different tools you might want to go through. I've added it on my mobile. Um, a bad thing about the mobile is you can only see the Twitter streams on here. I haven't been able to see the other ones and update the other ones on the mobile quite yet. You can only do the Twitter streams. Um, it is an affiliate program, um, so you can. I recommend you try to get that. No one signed up. <laughs> um, um, people use it in different functions. Here you can schedule, make a reply, and schedule a message, or save it as a draft. You have to make sure you select at least one Twitter profile, and you can even update an image or a file and send it to wherever you want, ping.fm or so forth. Um, just no, notice if you use them for your Facebook accounts, people will start to recognize that they are all scheduled out and may not respond the same way as if you put in live messages. Okay, so just understand that part of scheduling. You can also see some analytics of which um, reports are doing well and see some of your, your tweets that have gotten tons of responses and um, it's pretty neat to see their little template of what has been clicked if you put out some of your websites and um, see how people respond to it. Um, as well as Facebook Insights, you can see your pages and some of the interactions that's going on. This is great if you have a team of people you're helping put in um, your Facebook and you're doing this for business. As well as Google Analytics and seeing the clicks that are coming through that are tracked through um, Alley, there's different ways to track um, your websites through their Alley, their shortened email 
um, tools they have. If you don't know what a shortened email, um, when you shrink this, it'll have different ways for you to track the, sh the link shortener because in Twitter you can only have like 140 characters, right? So you're going to shrink that URL to different types of link shorteners and you can track the different where the links are being clicked by using these link shorteners here. If you just put the website, you're going to have to make sure that you have Google Analytics set up on that website so you can see where they were being um, clicked from in the different locations if you schedule them out. So a lot of different ways to optimize your tweets, your messages, your updates on how you use Hootsuite. So a great way to put your reports together and test different messages on how people respond to going to your website or your link. Um, always be optimizing for best results, right? Okay, so we've gotten our Facebook profile pages in there, LinkedIn, and we've learned how to set it up, schedule our post out, and we learned how to track it using those URL shorteners and be able to optimize our, our updates in the most efficient way. The Skype tool. You can, it's free, and you just simply go to skype.com, S-K-Y-P-E.com, get a free account, and this is recommended when you are talking to people in different countries. It's free to chat instantly. Sometimes there is a delay in updates or messages, and people can connect on the phone, um, talk to them, and even by video on Skype. It's not real secure because um, there's different ways. There's phones and we'll get more ways on how secure it is. And you can also do conferencing, share screens, which is easy when you're having trouble learning something and you're trying to describe something on what something looks like. You can easily jump on Skype, join a call, and share your screen and they can see what you're talking about if you're doing, talking about something on business. I've used that several times and didn't realize it was so easy to see your screen and what you were doing and so it all makes sense on how you do a specific task or something. Great, great tools. And you can record um, conversations as well. And so mine's always lit up in different ways and you can, there has a little button sometimes. There's notifications when you're getting updates and you can turn that sound off. There's so many customization on there. So I wanted to make sure you get Skype and connect with me. There are different chat groups to mastermind which has been very helpful. You can create your own groups and join MLSP. If you instantly don't have a question and it's the middle of the night and you don't know who to contact, you can jump on Skype, type your question in, and people are in there around the world and will probably be available to answer your question any time of the day or night, which is pretty amazing because you're thinking, oh, everybody's gone home to work and there's nobody for me to ask. But jump on Skype and you may be surprised. Just ask your question and it could be answered. This is one gr great tool with, with groups. And I also talked about how you can record interviews and um, being on screen and if they have webcams and being live videos. So why I recommend MLSP, MyLeanSystemPro.com is you can get that monthly residual income with only starting for $9.97. My goodness, a great tool to start building your team, building a business while you are learning these marketing strategies. So you're going to get some upfront income to help convert those prospects that see this system is going to help them. You're going to get some qualified prospects because you're going to get their phone numbers. You're going to be able to connect with them in different places such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, just the ones we've been over. And obviously you're going to get a branded drip system, email messages that are pre-written that work ready for you to use. Obviously as you go through your marketing strategy, you're going to want to customize these more, but they have emails ready for you to use to plug in. You don't have to go and write 32 emails before you get started. 
The emails are there ready for your team to learn the system and get them going. You're going to get automatic, automated exposure to your primary network marketing company. You're going to have that customized in an email. And like I said, the emails were already written for you in MLSP. And all they have to do is put your recommended system, your site there, and they can see it right away. So all you have to do is fix that recommended page and it's going to be updated in your emails automatically. As well as what I mentioned in the community, the Skype group chat, the Facebook pages, you're going to connect with people that are using the system and if you have any questions, to go to somebody using the system and you will get questions answered automatically. So you get great mentorship um, using this community and building your business solid education that is always updated, always for you to learn new tools and strategies. Alright, so here we are on the homework. If you haven't yet, make sure you join my um, list on mlmleadsuccesspro.com. You've entered your name and email and you've been getting uh, email every day about the update on when this boot camp is and updated live events that you can attend and, and learn more about how you can use some strategies to build your business in a more efficient way. And take the 14-day trial of 9.97. You get 14 days to look at the back office, look at all the training that is available. And after that, it's 49.97. And the commissions are $3 in the trials, $15 starting on each member, and it goes up according to ranking the members you have in. Get a a branded domain through GoDaddy for $9.99. Commissions are 20% for your team. And that's all set it up. On one page you put in the all the affiliate programs just like GoDaddy to get your commissions. They're going to come to you as recommended resource. Number four, you can get a branded blog. I have that offered for a $2.97 one-time payment. And the commission, you can set this up for your team as well. Make $100 for each person that gets a branded blog. It looks similar to mine. And even through the second tier, you can make $25 for those on their team. So that's pretty amazing on residual income as well for setting up a branded blog ready to go. $2.97 is not a bad price for having your picture, your capture page made, your opt-in ready to go, all the plugins ready available for you to ready update your post for your team. Number five, oh, and you go to that if you want to find a branded blog. Uh, just log into my email, log into to a blog.com, and you're going to get the information about that. If you came to me through mlmleadsuccesspro.com. You won't get that like you will on 2asuccessstreamblog.com. Okay, you'll get that email and understand how that's set up. You're going to go and set up your browser today. Get Google Chrome and list all those extensions. Have them ready to make your business more efficiently when you're doing your searches for on the internet, on the tools that you need. Set up your Gmail account where you don't check it a million times a day. <laughs> check it as a reference and get out of there. Check it once a week to clean it out and use it more efficiently. Have your folders lined up on, on mine so you can go right away and see what's being updated. Get go your Google Voice set up for your business so you can have people calling you from your Google Voice number and you can either screen them or um, if people leave you messages it will come to your email box and that will be more efficient for you to respond to all your email, your, your messages that come in. Set up your calendar with Tungle.me so you can have a more professional profile for people to make some appointments with you online. Get your Hootsuite. Organize your social media in one place so you can check up on your Twitter accounts in one place. Um, you really only need one, but as you expand to different niches, you want to have several different Twitter accounts. and. Um, I will have a whole Twitter training as well available for you so you can learn Twitter. Some people are totally confused in Twitter how they use But just go ahead and set it up, make an account, and set up your social media with your Facebook accounts and the different accounts through ping.fm. 
and get on Skype and add me, Alicia.Stringer, and I can connect you to some different groups so you can get um, hooked up and get your questions answered right away. And share with me any aha moments you've created that you've gone through this setup of your computer and on your online business at facebook.com, ask Alicia Stringer, and let me know if any of these tools have been helpful for you. If you might have recommended one that's worked for you, please share it on my Facebook page as well so we can work together to make our businesses more efficient. So stay tuned to your email for day four so we can go through more ways to be efficient in setting up our online business for success. I look forward to talking with you guys soon. Thanks. Have a great day now. Bye-bye.